everybody, welcome back. This is Nikki. You're back here again on the Wonderland channel here on YouTube. Thank you so much guys for coming and also for supporting me and my channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, be sure guys to like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, check me out on Instagram, all that good stuff. Look down if you aren't subscribed. Take a second. I'll wait. Okay. You should be subscribed by now and we can move on. So today guys, I'm here to share with you a little fashion article that caught my interest. Um, you know, I spent a lot of time online looking around for things and I caught an article that was entitled uh, a tool that calculates how much your designer pieces will be worth when selling them. So this was an article that was put out last week on the telegraph.com. It's a UK website, I believe. I think it's .uk or .co or something like that. And basically... Let's talk a set for a second about designer handbags or designer products, shoes, wallets, accessories, sunglasses, anything like that tend to be an investment. And what this article uh, talks about is from, they're talking about Vester Collective, which is like a, I think it's like a trade Z or a, um, a place that you can purchase designer products online, like any other site, you know, fashion file, Yogi's Closet, anything like that. And they have actually put a tool on their site where you can calculate the resale value of something that you're purchasing off of their site or something that you're purchasing, period. Um, and you can determine if it's worth it right from the start to purchase this product. You know, designer products, while some folks may not see the value in them or they may not understand uh, why people spend so much money on them, they actually are really good investments. You can actually get a really good investment quality out of this product where you've used it, you maintain it, and then you resell it and get a really good, you know, get some of your money back and be able to purchase something else. So some of the lines I picked out of this were, um, you know, you have to think about Birkin, for example, as a designer. Birkin did better on the stock market than some companies did last year. Actual financial companies. They did better because their product is actually appreciating in value. Um, it says that the Birkin bags have performed better than both the American stock market and the price of gold in the last 35 years. That means that you know, $5,000, $6,000 Birkin bag you purchase is now worth almost double because of its appreciation value. But had you known that then, or if you didn't know that then, I should say, you probably would have walked past the Birkin and not picked it up, not realizing that you actually could sell that today and get all of your money back and then some. So looking at um, brand, this is really concerning like luxury brands, guys. Um, the Michael Kors, the Coach, the mid-range brands, I should say the mid-range lines of a lot of those brands, they tend to stay one price. If they're a $300 bag, it stays a $300 bag and it doesn't go up. But when you get up into the upper echelon of premier bags, you know, you're talking about the YSL and the Gucci and of course the Chanel and the Prada, those high-end bags tend to go up in value for whatever reasons, whether they're putting more leather into them, they're putting more metallics into them, or they're just becoming more mainstream, or maybe a, a lot of celebrities are carrying them or wearing them. And you have to consider it an investment. Sure, Chanel bag is like $5,000, yikes. So really, when you look at articles like this that say, hey, look, why don't you look into making an investment and you can actually calculate what you're gonna get back? I think that is totally awesome. You know, it had me thinking about, okay, maybe I should long range consider a luxury bag, not just because it's luxury and it's Chanel or it's YSL and I just wanna have it, but one day when I'm sick and tired of it, I can turn it in and maybe even make double. I know anybody who has a Louis Vuitton Speedy that is 20 years old, you paid $300 for that 20 years ago. How much is Louis Vuitton Speedy brand new worth right now? Especially if it's bandolier, which actually bandolier is uh, recent. So if actually if it's a classic Speedy, you could get triple what you paid for it now if it's still in great condition or if you've had repairs done on it. And so 
Gucci is a safe bet when it comes to resale value, which is no great surprise that the Italian house has just reported a 17% rise in quarter sales because people are catching on to this. Like, wow, cars depreciate in value. Uh, you know, other things depreciate in value. Cell phones don't even last past two years, but you could buy pretty much a house or bag and it will appreciate in value generally. So I think that is totally awesome, guys. Go check this article out. I will leave the link down below if you are interested in looking at the potential resale value of a bag you want to purchase or maybe even a bag that you own already. Um, and I really, this really sparked an interest in me because I'm thinking if, uh, I might do a video about this later, guys. If you give, give me a thumbs up if you like this subject line and I'll consider doing a video in the future about how to resell your bag. What are some things you can do to make sure that you get a good amount for that bag? Even the mid-range or low-range bags, you can still get a decent amount for them and especially when, you know, depending on when and where you sell them. So guys, that is my little uh, fashion article to share with you guys. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe. Put your ideas down below. What do you think about this, uh, this particular subject line, how you're reselling bags, what you can do. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.